Number 30, letter A. Find the magnitudes of the forces F1 and F2 that add to give the total force F subtotal, shown in figure 4.34. Uh, this may be done either graphically or by using trigonometry. Uh, so here I'm going to use trig. All right. So basically what we need to do, uh, here is our triangle. It's a right triangle, therefore we can use SOHCAHTOA. And uh, the hypotenuse of the triangle has a value of 20 newtons, it says. We know this angle, and what we're looking to do is find these two sides. All right, so let's first start with F1. So again, knowing the hypotenuse, knowing this angle, and if I'm looking for the side adjacent to that angle, what trigonometric function should we be using? If you said cosine, you would be correct. So let's do cosine of theta will equal the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of that angle, 35, <clears throat> will be equal to the adjacent side, which was F1, divided by the hypotenuse value of 20. All right, and now all we need to simply do here is basically cross multiply, right? This is really over one. So I can just cross multiply these values there to get my answer, okay? So F1 will be equal to, take out the calculator, cosine 35 times 20, and we get about 16.38. Right, and it uh, looks like I gotta have two sig figs here, so I have to round down to 16. All right, so this will be 16 newtons. Okay, so that takes care of F1. Now let's take a look at F2. F2 is over here. Same procedure, all right? I'm gonna use the hypotenuse again of 20. I know this angle, I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle, therefore we're going to use sine. Okay, so sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the sine of that angle 35 will equal F2, now over 20. And again, same thing, just cross multiply. So the value of F2 is sine of 35 times 20, 11.47. All right, uh, but again, we got around to two sig figs, so it rounds it down to 11, all right? So, uh, okay. So now, actually, what I'm gonna do down here, let me just put the actual value, well, not the actual values, but let me put down um, a value that's a little more accurate because I see where the question's going. And uh, if I use these rounded numbers, it's not going to work out to be so nice. So 16.38. This was 16.38. Although, like I said, considering significant figures, these two would be your answers. All right. Let's move on to part B. So part B now says show graphically that the same total force is obtained independent of the order of addition of F1 and F2. Okay, so basically, um, take a look at the graph up on the right-hand side. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw a coordinate system, all right, and my origin, well, I'm trying my best here, but it keeps moving. Actually, you know what, uh, can I do this? No. So the origin here, let me, let me use my un, there we go, okay. So the origin is gonna lie right here. Okay, so basically what they did, they put down F1 first, right? They started at the origin, they put F1, and let me do a different color. They started at the origin, they put down F1 here, and then they added F2 to it. Now instead of going in that order, okay, instead of doing F1 and then F2, they wanna see if we would get the same hypotenuse if we did it the other way meaning if we did F2 first and then F1. So what would it look like if I drew F2 first? Well, it just would look like this. I would just go up and it would be the same height. So that would be F2. And then starting at the tip of F2, I put the tail of F1 and F1 looks just like this. And guess what? It would be exactly the same, right? I would get exactly the same hypotenuse, okay? So that's basically what number, letter B uh, is asking in terms of graphically. So it should make sense. Letter C. Uh, okay, so it says find the direction, all right, find the direction and magnitude of some other pair of vectors that add to give the total. Okay, so uh, let me first draw for this letter. So let's, this was part A. I did part B up here. And now let me do part C. Okay. So let me just draw a right triangle. Okay, so now here, if the hypotenuse is 20 and this angle is 35, then there's only one pair of vectors that work, all right? 
it would be exactly what we calculated over here. All right. Uh, this side, right, F2 would have to be 11, and F1 would have had to have been about 16. Okay, no other combination, no, no other value here or here would work, all right, if this angle here is 35. But what we could have done, and we saw that before, um, you know, we could have switched those two vectors. So I could have placed um, vector F1 over here of 16, okay, and then vector F2 over here. But the difference now is this isn't 35 degrees anymore, right? What angle do you think that would actually be? It would actually be 90 minus 35 degrees, right? It would actually be 90 minus 35 degrees. So if we were to do that, what would that work out to be? So 90 minus 35, well actually this angle up here would be 35, right? You might notice that. And the reason why it's 90 minus 35 is because that's still a right angle in here. Remember, all the angles uh, inside of the triangle then add up to 180. So I'm missing, right, that angle in there. So the angle would be 55, okay? But again, this doesn't give me a new pair. It just gives me a reorganized pair of 16 and 11. So basically, what am I saying? I'm basically trying to show you that the angle, in order to have a value of 20, and have a different pair, like an X and a Y here, this angle would have to be not 35, and it could not be 55. It would have to be some other value, other than those two. It doesn't even matter which, any other number, any other number that's acute, right? So make it up, I don't know, what, let's make it 20. Right? Let's make it 20, and if I make that angle 20, right, and if I wanna solve now for my X, what do I do? Well, guess what? It goes back to the same procedure we did for part A, right? To solve for this X, I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, I'm looking for the side adjacent, therefore I'm gonna use cosine, right? So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of 20 now will equal, uh, what do we got? X over 20, all right? So then X would therefore be, just plug it in, cosine of 20 times 20. So this is about, 18.79, so about 19, okay, great. And then I would do the same thing for y. Let me just choose a different color. All right, so y here, how would I solve for that? Again, I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, I'm looking for the side opposite of that angle. That sounds a lot like sine to me. So that's opposite over hypotenuse. So then the, therefore the sine of 20 will now equal y, all right, over 20. And y will then equal sine of 20 times 20. So 6.84, again, I got to round to two sig figs, so uh, 6.8. All right, 6.8. And this now, oops, uh, these now would be a new set of, or a new pair of vectors, okay? So this pair gives the same total, right? But the only difference is that the angle is now different, right? And the angle is not 35, it's not 55, it's some other value, all right? So, and you could have chosen a, any other angle, like I said, not 35, not uh, 55, uh, and you would have been fine. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I uh, look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.